Say hi to the fans. Today is a very special day because we are celebrating the 10,000 subscribers. I really can't thank you enough for the uninterrupted support. Even if you don't see it from your side, every subscriber, every kind comment, every email that you send me, every member of the channel and every student is really helping me making this possible. And with this, we have reached 10,000 people in the channel. I mean, if you think about it, it's insane. Therefore, today I have a special video for you and I would like you to see where all these things are cooked. So please, come in and let me give you a quick little tour around my studio. Oh, by the way, before we start, we are preparing a very cool online live masterclass, which is going to happen the 16th of October. And we will be working together on Asturias. Yes, the one and only piece of Asturias. But we will enter in quite uncommon sites and perspective of this work. So if you would like to join, I will leave here down below a link so that you can get your ticket and you can join us in this very promising live session together. So welcome to my little tiny temple. This is where I do all my work. Here is where I record, here is where I edit, here is where I film the videos, here is where I teach, here is where also I practice most of the time. So yeah, let me show you what's around here. So as you can see, this studio is pretty small. It's about three meters and a little bit um, wide and about four meters and a little bit long. It's by far not ideal, but hey, I just made it work somehow and um, you work with what you have. So one of the first things that was really crucial for me to do is to control the acoustics. So the first thing that I did is I reached out to a company, a German company called Hofa, and they made for me uh, an acoustic calculation of the space and where would be the best to position the table, to position the monitoring place and the waves and everything. So they gave to me the positioning of the desk and they gave to me also an approximate or let's say a schema of which kind of panels I would need and which kind of diffusers. So you see that I have here like the panels besides uh, the desk where I monitor. Let me see if I can show you. And there another one. And there on top, I have the cloud as well. So that's very, very important. And then I'm going to show you here in a bit, but in the other side of the room. So let's say the back part of the room is where I have the diffusers. Very important also are these base straps, these things that you see in here, these kind of columns. These are, as the name says, base trap. They trap the base. So it's just for the base, let's say, frequencies not to get on the corner and have a more even distribution of the whole song and they are really nice they changed a lot the room now let's go to the most important part the desk so the desk is really nothing special it's just an ikea limon desk and i got it when i first came here in the netherlands to study and i've had it and i used it since so i used it really a lot and the only thing that i did is to buy let's say an extra floating shelf this thick um, layer that you see on top of the of the desk and then I added the fit for the cupboards this very short fit to create this kind of extra shell and I added this diagonal kind of support everything is from Ikea and then I could just drill through this uh, longer shelf piece and I just screwed in these diagonal pieces so that in that way I could put the monitors in a nice fancy you know proper position without having to buy like extra uh, mounts and everything that was uh, nice i mean i like the way it is it's just sometimes a little bit flimsy so i added this extra stick on the side so that um yeah it doesn't bend over time or anything and if you kind of hit accidentally the the um, table everything shakes a little a little too much for my liking but okay i'm the only one being here so i'm very careful and that really never happens but um, eventually for vibrations and stuff, that's something maybe I'm thinking to change in the long run. So what's powering this whole setup is uh, my tower here, um, Be Quiet. I made it myself. I had I knew nothing about it. I just kind of Googled it and went along with it. And I put together the whole thing. 
And I will put the specs here on the screen because I honestly don't know it by heart. I love this case because this case is really big, which made things a lot simpler for the build. It's comfortable, you can put so many things inside and it's easy to maneuver, you can change it around. It's pretty amazing actually. And what I like that most of people were saying, like, ah, you're never gonna use this, that's kind of useless and that just makes it more expensive for nothing. I love this wireless, you know, like charging on top of it. I always drop my telephone there and it's so helpful. And many people were saying that was a useless feature. I personally, I like it very much, so whatever. As for what I have on the desk, it's uh, just an Apple keyboard, it's wired, so it's not even wireless. And then I use the Logitech uh, Master mouse. I bought the older version and I really liked it, mostly for editing videos with this side wheel and everything, it's just glory. I also have here on top the charger for my Samsung watch. It's a watch that I use pretty much just for training, for tracking a little bit the calories, and I like also very much to track my sleep hours and everything. Then I also have uh, an iPad, um, just I bought it for the online teaching and actually it has been a great upgrade in my life because now I practice always with the iPad, I have all my notes with me and I just, I don't know, it's really, really handy and it almost replaced the laptop being here at home doing things, it's very handy. So I would totally recommend to musicians to use iPad because you've got all your scores, all your exercises, all your books, all everything in such a small factor device and yeah it's expensive but it's really an upgrade then for teaching i have two um, cameras one logitech uh, brio in is 4k is the front camera that gives me space to maneuver with the zooming and everything without losing quality that i like very much and then i have the logitech stream cam as a secondary camera that i use for close-ups when i'm teaching or during the streams for the other peripherals i have a lg ultra widescreen and then I'm using the speakers, let's say the monitors for the audio, the Rocket 5. They are maybe not perfect for classical music because they have a little bit too much bass. Maybe one day I'll get some monitors that are a little bit more transparent, more suited for classical guitar, but then I need a lot more high-end monitors. And that's something maybe for the future. Then besides this, I just have these uh, Audio Technica headphones and I actually, I changed the pads here for some of them that are a little bit more, a little bit softer, a little bit more pillowy, which is nice also because the other ones dried out and they were like flaking. And then I also put this uh, little sleeve just because I have, I hang them under the interface and I didn't want the, the leather to peel off or just get too damaged. And also it gives a little bit of extra pillow because yeah, it just sometimes I get like pain in my head when I'm just um, too many hours with the headphones. So yeah, that's just whatever. Sound wise, I'm using the Scarlett uh, Focusrite with uh, two inputs. It's just barely enough for me, but for recordings, maybe I am missing a little bit of more flexibility to be able to add more microphones and capture maybe the sound of the room a little bit more, or maybe do some different combinations. So. Is the first interface I got. It's wonderful. It's plug and play. It's so easy. It works perfect still. And so I'm very happy with it. So the first microphone that I have plugged here is the one that I have here on the desk. Is this Sennheiser microphone. It's a microphone that is good for everything, for voice, for guitar, for drums. So it's kind of reliable. It's a uh, good quality. And, and so I kept this one on the desk so I can use my other Octava microphones for the let's say guitar recordings. Now, let me show you a little trick that I learned a while back somewhere in YouTube about how to plug the XLR microphone directly to the DSLR without having to pass through the computer. So directly from the interface, microphone, DSLR. So what I did for the tutorials to be able to get this input to directly to the camera without having to have the door open was to, to get this jack input here on the headphones and then this is the gain of the headphones so then I keep it let's say in, in the levels that I want I route it all the way all the way here on around the room and then that comes out in here with this then I got this adapter this adapter like that and this goes in the DSLR the camera that gives me the possibility to get the sound 
from this microphone directly to the camera so it's already synced in and that's one big step less that I have to do in the post-production. And that's especially great when you cut a lot and you need to do a lot of takes, then it really saves a lot of time. And the last thing for teaching, I use these little LED lights. I just got them out of eBay, so I don't even remember where or which um, seller. I can probably not put it here on the screen because I can impossibly find that. But there are so much better lights nowadays out there on Amazon, so just any lights actually, they're good. But they are really helpful actually to get a much better image from the webcam. This chair is uh, one that I found in Amazon. I just honestly, I bought it because it had the movable arm. So when I'm teaching, I can put away the, the armrest. And um, it was white and looked like it was comfy enough with this uh, bigger, let's say thicker pillow. But uh, yeah, it's kind of falling apart. It dries out this kind of fake leather and I tried to fix it buying some fake leather repair, but somehow it looks even worse. I don't know how I managed to do that, but okay. And the most important part, it's what is in right in the corner. Because here the space is so limited that I had really to find a way to gain the maximum amount of space to film um, without sacrificing the whole desk placement for the recordings, because both things are equally important to me. So what I did is to mount this uh, studio light right up there in the corner. I bought some brackets, some industrial brackets, and then with a Manfrotto arm, they are called super clamps, I believe. I put it together and it really gave me a lot of flexibility to just adjust it as I wanted and as I needed. And I did exactly the same thing here with uh, what's right under. So I have two brackets, one for the light and one for this. This was initially just for the camera, but recently I got this teleprompter. And because sometimes I talk a little bit too much in the, in the videos and then my editor needs to look for 40 million hours footage for three minutes, <laughs> then I got this teleprompter to force myself to go a little bit more into the point. <clears throat> because one of the comments that I got from you guys is that you enjoy the videos because they go very much into the topic right away. So I want to keep it that way, but sometimes it's not easy when there are so many things in your head that you want to say. So I'm hoping that the teleprompter is going to make, let's say, my life of just filming and mostly of my editor also a lot easier and a lot quicker. So for the light, I got this Godox uh, 150. It's super powerful, it's incredibly powerful, actually so much that I would need probably to buy one of these uh, diffusers, but I still have not made up my mind as to which diffuser I should put in there because, yeah, the spacing. So probably I need to go for a rather small one or something, I don't know. I should probably get one because it's crazy bright. So just to show you how bright is this, this is uh, 1%. And then I can go all the way up. You can probably not see it because the camera changes, but you can see here <laughs> how exposed, how overexposed I am. Now this is a hundred percent and it's really, really blinding. So usually I actually have to use it at about 20% or something for the videos. And sometimes, sometimes it's still too much, but I like to, woo, I'm blind. <laughs> but I like to have everything here in the corner easy and also that there are no cables everywhere. If you have noticed, like now I have no cables around because of the light or anything that I really, really like because it's where I practice and where I teach and I need to have things a little bit, a little bit decent and somehow beautiful. I hope you enjoyed the visit here in my studio and one more time, thank you to all of you and thank you especially to all the patrons that support the channel and as always don't forget to drop a like to spread the word of this beautiful classical guitar community god bless you <laughs>